Hello, I'm Simon Alexander Adams, also known as Polyhop. Uh, welcome to Touch Designer 10, where I'll present topics and mini projects that can be covered in 10 minutes or less. Today, we'll look at using the jump flooding algorithm to create outlines with consistent spacing using any sort of black and white shape as input. Uh, we'll be using David Braun's jump flooding talks, which can be found on his GitHub. It's linked in the description. I've also discuss the jump flooding algorithm in quite a bit more depth in my tutorial on distance map displacement. So if you want a more thorough explanation, you can check that out as well, also linked in the description. Uh, shout out to my Patreon supporters and specifically my top supporters. On Patreon, you gain access to exclusive project files, touch designer tools, and more. So enough intro, let's go. All right, let's start by creating a kind of temporary input here with a circle top. We'll swap that out later, but for now, give us some kind of input. Set the radius to 0.3 and the resolution to 1080 by 1080. And then I'm going to use a displace top to give this a little bit of motion. So dropping a noise top in, let's get this one set up to 1080 by 1080, pixel format, 32-bit float under the noise, uh, monochrome off, set the period up a bit to like five. Simplex, that can be fine. Um, abs time dot seconds. Actually, we're gonna put this in the translate Y and uh, multiply that by 0 0.1 so it's a lot slower. And also bring our displace weight down to like 0 0.1, why not, or 0 0.2, sure. Give ourselves a little blob here um, as our input. And now let's pull in our jump flood algorithm tool and drop this into the first input. So you'll see now if I drop a null, we've got pixel values that go from say the border of our shape to somewhere around like 20-ish. Uh, I'm gonna turn clamp negative distance off. So now I have negative values on the inside of my shape. And before I rearrange this, I also wanna make sure it's not 32-bit float mono. So I can use a resolution. Really any top does this, but resolution is more of a signifier that I'm changing something about the quality. Uh, the pixel format, we'll set this to 32-bit float. So now we have all four channels here. Great. So I'm also going to use a math top here. And if we look at those values again, we're going from like negative 10 to negative to positive 20 roughly. I'll give us a little bit of wiggle room here and you can always adjust this if you need to later. Um, I'll also set my alpha just to one, make it a little easier to see the texture. Now that we have our distance map, let's create some outlines. Uh, we'll start by adding a lookup top. And since we have this gradient moving from the inside of our shape out, we'll be recoloring that using a ramp top. And currently it won't look like much, but if we wanna start getting those stripes, we can bring that period down to say 120, one over 20. And here we go, we, we already have our uh, effect almost happening, right? So let's, let's spice this up a little bit. Um, before we do, I wanna pop this over to the right. So enable the display flag, split the display, left, right, alt four for top viewer, and then on the left, right click, display, turn off backdrop tops. So now we can kind of see what we're doing as we go. All right, so the next thing, um, let's give ourselves a sharper edge here. So I'm pulling that stop over slightly and then setting this to step. Uh, we're getting some different width lines here. So I also wanted boost my resolution up to say 1080, give me myself some more pixels to work with, um, and maybe give this a little bit of motion. So abs time.seconds times 0.1. And here we go, we're, we're moving out. <laughs> so fun stuff. Um, one thing we might also wanna do is kind of give myself some different coloring in the center of the shape. Uh, so we can branch from this resolution here because it already is giving us kind of a, a nice mask. So let's create a math top and then set integer to round. 
we're getting that hard edge where our shape is. And if I hit A and then N, you'll see that um, it's all negative and positive values going up more from more than zero to one. So I'm gonna also limit this. Clamp, clamp, zero to one. Um, and then I can mix between or blend between um, two different uh, lookups here. So let's maybe make my interior kind of like black lines instead of white lines and one over 50. Cool. And then I can mix between those with the matte top. It has two source inputs. And then the third input, we can use this uh, silhouette here. Now it doesn't do anything yet, but we need to change the matte channel to red. And there we are. We have ourselves uh, our blob with you know, evenly spaced outlines from the edge going out and the inside. Um, we can also maybe make the motion on the inside negative, sort of like it when it goes opposite directions. It's a cool effect. So um, yeah, from there, you know, you can certainly add color, all sorts of things, but I wanna also show quickly how we can add a silhouette input. So video device in, this is something that will work if you've got a NVIDIA graphics card, is the um, NVIDIA background. It does a decent job at isolating the subject from a webcam feed. Uh, I will fit this inside 1080 by 1080 square and fit outside. Um, I also need this to be either a zero or a one, otherwise this effect is not happy. So I will round this, gives me that kind of harder edge. And it's currently 8-bit fixed alpha. We can fix this pixel format using a reorder top. Uh, we'll want to use reorder since the input only has a value in the alpha channel. So we'll set all of our outputs to alpha. Additionally, we need to make sure we change the pixel format to 32-bit float RGBA. So now if I drop this in, it'll work. You know, if you disable any of these, breaks. So you really need to make sure that your format going into the jump flood looks as, as so. If you hit A and N, you see the same thing in all channels and it's either zero or one, not uh, any sort of floats values between the, those two. It needs to be an integer. Cool. So yeah, we've got ourselves this uh, silhouette. <laughs> Can't jump back. And then uh, yeah, let's, um, let's smooth it out a little bit too because you'll notice it's a little jittery. We can use a blending technique that I've shown in other tutorials to ease between values. Right click to add a base comp in line. I'll then drop a feedback top and a switch top in here. And a null. Call this end feedback and drop that onto my feedback. And then my switch should be blend between inputs I'll customize my parent component and drag the index on, bind pairs new master, range max to one. And now we've got ourselves all sort of, uh, has a little bit of a delay. So you can bring this value down if you want it to be more responsive, um, but it does kind of do some, um, you know, blending of those artifacts. I also think adding a blur here can, can smooth things out a bit. Um, in terms of getting those um, edges less like pointed and rough. So yeah, I think that that's a, uh, you know, you can find other ways to clean this up. Um, even blurring a little bit on this edge. It's hard to see, but you know, bringing this up can uh, improve that. And then also even like an anti-alias at the end cleans up those edges. There you go, that's the system. I hope that you find some good uses for this, certainly as an interactive input with either silhouettes or a more abstract input like tracking a shape or object or generative inputs that hopefully go beyond this really basic displaced circle that I had as a placeholder. You can go a long way with playing with the ramps here. You can certainly spend more time than this on a, on a ramp and uh, bringing this um, period down, you know, you can get much 
bolder, thicker lines. Um, play with like, oh, which, you know, where are those ramps located? Um, I think there's a lot of fun to be had there. Certainly doesn't need to be stepped notches, linear or ease in, ease out. Even simple changes like these can provide varied effects. And that's it. I hope you find some good uses for this technique, and thanks for watching.